Dobrý den, dámy a pánové. So hello everybody, hello ladies and gentlemen, dear friends of Agora. I would like to welcome you to Agora 12 version of this for Agora for people who use technologies and who are visually impaired. My name is Radek Pavlíček from Tere Seal Center at the Masaryk University and I'll be here with you through the whole program. We would like to welcome to everybody who joined us, who made a while for that, because without having the, the most important uh, people, the participants, it wouldn't make any sense to, to uh, organize this event. So we're very glad that uh, you are here with us at the moment and you would like to learn something new about the uh, technology and using um, ICT for users who are visually impaired. I would like to also to welcome uh, the, the tutors who prepared eight lectures for us on various topics from this field. I would like to thank my colleagues from the technical support who were very important for organizing this event. As I always say, uh, I feel like a dwarf on the, on the shoulders of some giants. I know it's difficult to believe that because of my, uh, my body, but without their effort and time, my, our colleagues uh, put into this, uh, there, there would wouldn't be any chance to organize this event. I would also like to thank the interpreters who are going to interpret uh, simultaneously into English because as we agreed in spring, one of uh, the things uh, we would like to keep also for our future is to getting bigger, uh, so not only focusing on Czech and Slovak uh, public, and uh, thanks to this form of communication, we have the chance. I'm very glad and I would like to thank that there uh, around Agora there is uh, a community which is still getting bigger and bigger, a community of people who are somehow connected and uh, who find this topic important and they want to spend time on it. I would also like to thank our partners who support us and without without them there wouldn't be a chance to organize this event in the size the company Deloitte and the endowment fund uh, of Czech radio Svetluška that uh, supports our event uh, for a long time and not only financially but also uh, supporting supporting us with their knowledge but not only with the money which is of course very important and essential but it's not only about money and this partnership i believe is uh, is bigger than that it's bigger than just the money i would like to thank the other partners that we managed to get in touch with in the last few months and i'm very glad i can also welcome uh, some of the some other participants from the university and uh, participants from open house prague and also partners and fans of uh, Vodafone uh, fund and also to Seznam company uh, that supported us with uh, quite, a, quite a large campaign that, for example, reached also my uh, my parents. Uh, there was a, and uh, there with their very special uh, dialect, uh, really appreciated that even even that this campaign got even to them. And also I would like to welcome partners from other projects that we have, uh, because Agora is also the final conference of our project. 
in the program we will see some of uh, the last parts of this project as well. I believe I did not forget about anybody and now I would like uh, I would like Gabriela Drastichová to speak about uh, the head of the endowment fund of the Czech Radio uh, that is our partner for for a while, for a few years, and we're very glad for that. So, Gabi, please, uh, if you, if you could. So, Radek, thank you very much for inviting us and uh, for having the chance of uh, speaking to you. I'll be very brief because uh, it was very, it was very difficult for you to keep the internet connection in spring. He, in Brno today, it's quite difficult to keep the internet connection ready in Prague. Um, so I, I also watched InSpo in the shorter version and I checked uh, the, the autumn program of Agora and I am I'm amazed how many things, uh, how many topics we are able to, to talk about, how many apps uh, we, we localize for Czech users and especially the target group of heavily visually impaired. Uh, I think this, this group actually destroyed the participants on InSpo and you who are watching this conference today, you are demanding users and you really want to have the best that the world of technology has to offer and I'm very glad that Svetlushka can uh, help uh, with uh, the financial aspect for you. Uh, from, from the program, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, some of the some of the parts uh, that are important for, you know, for getting uh, the orientation in the system and this is the topic that uh, that companies uh, talk to us and we have calls from many companies uh, because it's a very important topic nowadays and another, another uh, important thing will be blind shell uh, because I believe that the blind shell has a lot to say and uh, and I think the huge moment for Blychen is yet to come. Also, I would like to say that there is one point uh, we all miss, that we cannot meet face-to-face -face on Agora or in SPO, uh, because this part just uh, isn't happening. So my idea is, let's uh, during the days that uh, that we are um, that we are getting to uh, in, in these days, because the time is coming. Let's focus on educating ourselves. Let's let's find some topics uh, that will help us and uh, e either learning how to work with uh, some aids that will help us and uh, to spend uh, the months before the Christmas learning and studying and believe us Svetlushka is here for you to support you we have programs for individuals that that can uh, find uh, these these programs and they can ask for support if you are fast enough and uh, if you make something interesting if you find something interesting uh, on the 26th of October uh, is the deadline of uh, the, this admission procedure for individuals where uh, this education is a part of, of uh, is the essential part and during during uh, November we will decide who is entitled to be supported so fingers crossed for everybody for all of us uh, to, to keep the life going on and I wish you health and I wish you to enjoy uh, this uh, this Agora online. Gabi, thank you very much and uh, as I mentioned before this event 
uh, this, this uh, online conference, this is not the end. This is basically the, 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 the beginning of Agora uh, because it's all about so learning at home, about self-education and uh, there will be uh, workshops going on uh, and we would like to continue with these workshops uh, until roughly half of December. I will mention this, I will be talking about this also at the end of our presentation, so I'm very glad you mentioned this. This is, this is the direction uh, we want to go and I'm very glad that we are on the same page. And uh, I'm very glad that you have chosen some parts of the program and that, that even for you, who are fans uh, and you know long-term friends of Agora, uh, you found some interesting topics and this time will be spent. Another guest of mine here is Bara Binova, which is, which is a name that's probably here for the first time in the context of Agora. Uh, Bara Binova is a person, a lady who is very important for the present um, idea of Agora and the, how Agora, the way Agora looks. A um, few years ago, uh, Bara Binova initiated the, the, the communication between Deloitte and our uh, Teresia Center. Uh, it was those times when uh, the Deloitte company was looking for uh, some areas uh, where to where to find uh, some people with specific or special needs and Bara Binova sent uh, their attention to our Teresia Center and so uh, we agreed uh, with each other and this this long-term uh, cooperation is working really nicely and also because uh, because Bara initiated this uh, this few years ago. I would like to thank Bara again for, I mean, probably she didn't know about this when she started this huge thing and I would like if she could just say a few words to us. Radek, thank you very much for this, uh, for this uh, introduction and also to Gabina. Um, I'm very glad that I can be here with us uh, for, for this moment of the beginning of Agora. This, uh, this idea is really beautiful and uh, admirable and uh, I, can, I can feel that it's huge and it's very important to, to make our lives easier and not to be obstacles in our lives for some people because some people who are, who are not in the flow of technology, they feel that they are controlled by technology, which is wrong because they should be, of course, in charge of technology, using technology as uh, tools and you need to feel that you are, are the master. Uh, of technology. Uh, I, I work uh, at the Faculty of Informatics at, at Masaryk University and it's a very important job uh, for me uh, because I'm the Vice Dean and I try to connect uh, the world of uh, technology and people who really need it and uh, who can use it. I'm very glad that Agora is, uh, is a part of this and, and I feel that uh, we are responsible for uh, for connecting uh, these two worlds and moving uh, moving it forward. I'm very glad that Agora is doing a great job with this, and I am glad that many people are joining us and are helping us. And there are many projects uh, where any people in need they they they, they have uh, many places to to address and people are able and are ready to help us. I am very glad that my personal project Czechitas uh, that, that should help people get, get uh, introduced with technology, especially to ladies and, and girls, is working in the same field. Well, I would like to thank to everybody who, who doesn't stop, who follows their idea, who follows the project. And I would like to thank uh, Radek for doing uh, his job the way he does it. 
I would like to thank Bada for her for her comments and for her dear words. And I'm very uh, glad that hopefully next year the situation will be calm and we will have a chance to meet uh, face to face and uh, to, to really to, to meet, to get to know each other and maybe to find some form of, uh, form of cooperation in the field uh, where Bara is the, is the expert. So, again, thank you, Vara, very much for your input and generally for what you do between Deloitte and uh, Teresia Center several years ago. And our first, our first guest, our first speaker for the beginning uh, will be the head of the center, Petr Peñas, who, as, uh, as he always does, he would like to, he would like to say hello to the participants. So, hello everybody, and I'm very glad that I have the chance to send some brief words uh, your way. I'm here, as, uh, as Radek mentioned, I'm here as the, as the host. I have the chance uh, to really switch place with him, and I'm, I'm talking to you from the same position, from the same place as he did. I would like to continue to follow what he said. Uh, that he mentioned he feels like a dwarf on the back of on the shoulders of a giant i because of the because of the situation i i would say that i feel like the dwarf uh, who is who is um, under the feet of the giants because the situation uh, the way it's happening is moving so fast and so so it's moving so rapidly that it's uh, really difficult to well, to follow everybody or to try to have an impact on the situation. I'm very glad that there are people, uh, for example, like Radek, who even in this situation can uh, were able to move Agora into the environment uh, where it was able to organize. We would we would all like to meet face to face uh, the way it was before. I would also like to uh, personally thank to Radek because we are all fascinated by the energy, by the, by the input that he gives into this and I'm very, I'm really very glad. At the moment I'm not really sure whether, because of all other, uh, all other because the technologies are using, uh, are, are used to get around in the real world, in the so I say physical world, but maybe it's time to, to find, to work on some technology to to help uh, get around the, the digital world. Uh, we're not we're not sure whether we're getting back to the real world uh, or not, because the university is not sure about that. Uh, we're glad that thanks to thanks well because of this and thanks to this, we got a chance to connect us with more people worldwide. So I'm sure that next time when we have the chance to to get in touch face to face, uh, I. I believe that many of you, many of us, will be connected the same way uh, as uh, we are connected now. So I think uh, for next few, uh, for, for next years, for next uh, conferences, I hope we will all be together. People, people here, people face to face in the real world and also virtually. And I'm looking forward to meeting you all
I would like to thank not only to, to Petr, but also Gabina and Bara uh, to, for their speeches. And I'm very glad uh, about the way that uh, we are really on the same page uh, in all these matters. And I believe that together uh, together we will continue because you cannot create this event uh, just yourself, just by one person. You need a team of people. You need, uh, you need, we need our help. We need to help each other and we will try to move uh, this conference uh, so that it was the most effective and it's interesting for everybody. Everybody. Uh, I would like to join. So now let's get into the into the uh, real stuff, the basic stuff that we are here. Uh, the, the first person uh, is Mr. Idan from uh, Israel, presenting the topic that was actually introduced by Gabina. And the topic is about people who are visually impaired, uh, how to uh, move around in, in real space. And, and although, although nowadays, because of the, the situation and online world, we cannot really try this, I truly believe that next year we have the chance to, to try it out ourselves. So, Idan, thank you very much. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Idan Meir. I'm a co-founder and CEO of a company called Right Here. And I thank you for watching this uh, lecture. It's going to be 10 minutes about um, the revolution of, way by, of audible wayfinding systems. Uh, let me just share with you my screen right away. Here we go. So great. You should be able uh, to see it right now. Start. Um, I always, we always say it's right here that inclusion starts with accessibility. Um, and in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to talk to you about the revolution of Audible wayfinding systems in the built environment, um, specifically about the right here solution, how we solve this uh, orientation challenge, uh, and what takeaways practical takeaways can you take out of it. It's only 10 minutes, so let's just uh, get into it. Uh, as I said, my name is uh, Idan Meir. I'm a co-founder and CEO of Bright Here. I've learned business and psychology here in Israel, and I'm very excited to be speaking to you today uh, as part of the Agora conference. I'll start with two, uh, um, two facts. Uh, for those of you who cannot see, for those of you who cannot see the uh, slides I'm uh, presenting, I will just uh, describe them audibly. So what you can see on now on the screen is two uh, facts next to two images. One is that there are at least 75 million Braille signage in the USA. This is according to our research that we've done. Uh, they're probably about the same number or even more than that in Europe. And you can find the Braille signage everywhere you go, uh, from smaller restaurants to the biggest airports, usually on the doors or next to the doors uh, or on the wall, um, next to restrooms, inside the elevators, uh, we are all familiar with the Braille signage. Another fact is that 90% of the blind community do not read Braille. Uh, that leaves us basically with a not very effective uh, solution for wayfinding. Um, and it also leaves us with three main questions. One is where are these Braille signage? Uh, secondly is again, who understands them? As we said, it's only 10% out of the, the blind uh, population or the blind community. Uh, and thirdly is why would you want to touch it? Now it's uh, COVID-19 times uh, and plus public interfaces is not very recommended to touch. Um, According to our research, uh, there, is there are 5.4% um, out of the uh, population that are people with 
orientation challenges, as we uh, call them. Uh, we're talking about, of course, the blind and visually impaired, but we're also talking about people with cognitive disabilities, mental disabilities, or other orientation challenges, uh, which cause them to be not as, as, as independent as they can be in the public uh, environment. Um, in the US alone, we're talking about at least 18 million uh, people. So where are the wayfinding systems are needed? Uh, what you see now in front of you is the skyline of New York. And the reason I put this uh, uh, drawing on the side is because we are looking to have uh, the audible wayfinding systems in basically every space that is open for the public. You can think about audible wayfinding systems in a very similar way to ramps, basically. Uh, ramps, just the physical ramp, is what allow a person on wheelchair to access independently to a built environment, to every venue. Similarly, audible wayfinding system, it's what helps uh, a person with orientation challenges, again, for example, a blind person, uh, to access independently to that uh, environment and be able to independently navigate and find his way in there. So it could be small restaurants, to museums, to social centers, schools, retail stores, office buildings, stadiums, medical centers, city halls, shopping malls, airports, banks, universities, theaters, and go on and on and on. Again, every place that has a ramp or should have a ramp for wheelchairs should also have a ramp uh, for the blind, as we call it, or should also have an audible wayfinding system for the orientation challenge. If we talk a little bit about audible wayfinding system. So it's basically divided to two landscapes. One is for the outdoor and the second one is for the indoor. So for the outdoor, uh, we have GPS. Uh, GPS is very effective, it's very powerful. It can be more accurate, that's right. It's not the most accurate technology, but it's very uh, um, accessible um, in, in terms of the technology of it. Uh, and there are different apps, just like right here, that based on this technology and provide you with a wayfinding or even navigation uh, experiences. Right here specifically is an app, both on Android and iPhone. It's a free, 100% free app um, that helps you find your way and navigate wherever you wanna go uh, with the GPS technology. So I guess many of you are already familiar with that. This technology has been around for years, um, nothing new so far. I'm moving on, what you see now in front of you is the right here uh, uh, app on an iPhone device. And the reason I put that is because I wanted to uh, uh, grasp your attention to the record feature. The record feature is one of these unique features of the right here uh, navigation experience outdoors. And what this feature is basically does, it helps you to record information which uh, in a specific location. So it will be a, a kind of memo location based. So think about it. Next time you'll go to your friend, for example, and in a certain intersection that you get usually confused if the turn should be right or left. Next time you'll be there, you can just uh, record yourself telling yourself, hey, this is where I need to turn right. Or hey, this is where my friend's house is. Or hey, this is where my uh, bus station is. And then the next time you'll visit there, the app will give you this kind of reminder, this location-based memo, as I said. It's very effective in terms of creating your own landmarks or creating your own uh, uh, points on the map will help you to uh, uh, get a go uh, to your destination. Another feature that I wanted to uh, share with you is the, is the nearby locations list that we have in the app. Uh, you can find in, the, in this feature, for those of you who have tried it or willing to try it later, all the locations that are right here enabled, uh, as well as other points of interest in the area. Uh, and each time you click on one of our nearby locations, you'll be able to first simulate that location, learning about this uh, place and building your own mental map before arriving. You'll be able to navigate there, whether if it's by walk or uh, through uh, third-party apps uh, like Uber, Lyft, or any other public transportation. 
I'm sorry, as well as finding the bus stations, lines, and schedule. This specific uh, information is currently available only in certain countries, not in the Czech Republic yet, but soon to come. So nearby location is also a very powerful feature uh, in the app. Another feature that I wanted to mention, which is right for both indoor and outdoor landscape, before we'll discuss the indoor landscape, is that our integrate, it's called Lens, and it's regarding our integrations with the Be My Eyes and Cash Reader apps. I guess many of you are already familiar with the Be My Eyes app, as well as with Cash Reader. So thanks to the Lens feature, you'll be able to open them both uh, through the right here uh, uh, app. Therefore, you won't need to swap between the different apps. It can be all done through the app itself. Uh, more integrations will be come soon, so stay tuned. Let's talk a little bit about the indoor environments. And what you see now on the slide is just a picture of an indoor uh, mall. So in the indoor environment, uh, it is relevant to share with you few, two more components of the right here system beside of the app. So one is the beacons. Beacons is, as you might also see me on the screen, is a sensor in the size of a matchbox or imagine a sensor in the size of AirPods case. Uh, it's a Bluetooth sensor which required no electricity. It runs on batteries inside, so you don't need to have an outlet in the venue. It's it does not require internet. It basically does not require anything from the venue. It's a plug and play type of system that can be configured for different ranges. Uh, all the information that that beacon will be uh, helping our app to display audibly are being configured through the third component, which is our online dashboard. It's basically a cloud-based platform where the venue, if it's a mall or if it's a university or any other uh, location, can basically configure and put all the information there. So our users, when they come near nearby that beacons, they'll be able to hear that in their own language. Uh, the Right Here app is currently supporting 26 different languages. Check is one of them, of course, so I invite you to try it uh, later on. I want to move forward and not, the, I, I do, I, I know I don't have to, too many time more, about a few more minutes. And so in the next few minutes, I want to discuss a few more things. One is that the value, the value for users, I think is very clear. Uh, as one of our users said, you get to feel a sense of freedom that you don't take for granted at all. This is Tally who told us this. Uh, so I think being able to be independent in a public space is, is a very important thing. It's a very crucial thing. Uh, and I think it's obvious. But let's talk a little bit about the value for businesses who work with us. One, it helps them to be more compliant. In different countries, there are different regulations regarding to accessibility. So if uh, in Czech is similarly to, in, to Israel, having an audible wayfinding system help the businesses to be more compliant with the reg accessibility regulations in the country. Secondly, is to improve their image. Many businesses and companies happy to promote ac accessibility and inclusion nowadays. Uh, it's just help their brand um, as well. Thirdly, is to expand the market because basically when you welcome more visitors, you welcome more clients to your venue, whether if it's a restaurant or a hotel, an hotel, uh, it works the same. And lastly, is to improve their corporate responsibility. So I, I call it the ethical reason. Having an audible wayfinding system is just the right thing to do, regardless of all the other reasons I've mentioned. I think it's also obvious, at least to those of you who are listening to me uh, today. I, I'll kind of try to run very fast on two case studies that we had. Uh, one of them is with the Tel Aviv municipality. For those of you who might have been to Tel Aviv here in Israel, we've turned Ibn Gabriel Street, which is the main street in Ibn Gabriel, into accessible street, an audible street, by deploying our beacons outdoors. What we've been able to learn from this project is that it helps to the accuracy of GPS. Uh, we basically supported that with our Bluetooth beacons, and both of them are working perfectly together. Uh, during this case or use case, we've learned about the importance of per personalization. This is how we, when we came up with the 
feature of the self recordings I've mentioned earlier. We also realize the importance of having the system running in multiple languages as well for tourists. There are a lot of tourists in Tel Aviv in normal days, not now in COVID-19. So we realize we need to have more and more languages within the app. And we also have learned that in, an, in, in a busy street, a dynamic street, like in uh, Evin Gabirol in Tel Aviv, avoiding obstacles in a, in a dynamic environment is a challenge. So while the, the wayfinding system or the orientation layer of the street is uh, good, it's still a challenge to walk around there independently because of the so many different obstacles uh, that are there. The other or the second use case I wanted to share with you in the next few, two or three minutes is their use case with Shufersal. Shufersal is Israel's largest retailer. It's uh, basically a supermarket chain. They have over 200 of them in Israel and, we, and we've turned them all accessible with our system. What you've been able to learn from this uh, use case is our universal thinking. Uh, we knew that before, but it helps us to uh, uh, be more focused on that through this uh, project because we've learned that one of the features that we have, which is called for local assistance indoors, is being effective not just for the blind and visually impaired or most of our users, but also for people on wheelchairs, for example, when they have a uh, heart of reach to reach the uh, uh, upper shelves in the supermarket. So by contacting a local um, assistant, they've been able to get this uh, assistant and getting that to the item they were looking to find. We also learn obviously that the more beacons is helping from better accuracy. So we deployed more in the second phase of this project. Uh, and lastly, this is when we learn about the importance of having integrations with apps like Be My Eyes and Cash Reader to help our users identifying the items on the shelf or at the cashier. A um, few more uh, thoughts to share. Uh, when thinking of choosing an accessible wayfinding solution, here's just a few things to consider. Obviously, the cost of it, uh, the cost of the audible wayfinding system. There are different alternatives in the market, uh, of course. Secondly, the privacy. Uh, at right here, we really care about this. There is no even registration in the app. We don't know who our users are. Um, so there's no Facebook or Google login or email registration within the app. Uh, and I think it's another factor to consider. The maintenance, how hard it would be to maintain the the system, uh, the availability on Android and iOS, when thinking of, again, inclusion uh, or accessibility, we want it to be as universal as possible and as accessible as possible. Therefore, one platform is just not enough. Um, and again, from the universal design perspective, having it have feature that's not ha helping only the blind and visually impaired, but again, the mainstream or anyone else who can, who have or consider himself with an orientation challenge. Uh, more about that, by the way, can be found on wayfinder.net. It's a, a wayfinding uh, community that can be found online. Um, right here is currently working with over 800 uh, locations worldwide. Uh, we are currently, in last time I've checked, which was uh, two days ago, about two or three days ago, we had 2.3K monthly active users. It's Corona time, so it's a bit lower than what we usually have. And our growth rate is on 13 new locations every month. Um, we have also put some logos here in this slide uh, about different companies. We have wor working with partners in every uh, sector from, again, retail to healthcare, through municipalities, uh, theaters, uh, universities and more. Um, and we are very excited to start our journey in the Czech Republic. Um, as, as some of our users said, I don't leave my house without the right here app open. Uh, and as I said before, it gives you a sense of freedom. So we're very driven with our mission to turn the world into a more accessible uh, environment. Uh, and you can help us with this mission. Uh, how? Very easily, there are three things you can do. One, try our app and share your feedback. Secondly, ask venues to install the system and join our network. And thirdly, just talk to us, share with us your ideas, share with us your feedback, whatever they are. You can, you're also welcome to join our Facebook group. Just search for right here uh, under groups at Facebook. And we are looking to find you there and answer all your thoughts and questions. And I will 
finish my very blitz lecture with this sentence, which I like very much. The only thing worse than being blind is having sight, but no vision. Thank you so much. My contact details are below in this slide and I will also describe them. I-D-A-N at R-I-G-H-D dash H-E-A-R dot com. This is my email, idan at righthere.com. Thank you so much. And it's been a pleasure. If you have any questions or feedback, I'd love to learn from it. And uh, take care. Tak já děkuji Idanovi za úvodní příspěvek a pokud máte nějaké otázky nebo vás napadnou třeba v průběhu dneška nebo dalších dnů, tak se můžete na Idana obrátit prostřednictvím té e-mailové adresy, kterou uvedl na konci prezentace. I v našem druhém příspěvku zůstaneme v Izraeli u izraelské společnosti ale tentokrát to nebude right here, ale bude to společnost Orkem. Předpokládám, že zařízení Orkem My Eye není potřeba dlouze představovat. Už tady s námi nějaký ten rok je. Měli jste možnost si ho vyzkoušet, ať už na Agoře, anebo na naší partnerské konferenci INSPO, kde jsme ho před několika lety představovali v české premiéře. A samozřejmě uběhla nějaká doba a nás zajímalo, jakým způsobem může toto zařízení pomáhat uživatelům v praxi. Tak jsme oslovili kolegy s žádostí o takto pojatý příspěvek. No a na to, jak může Orkem My Eye pomáhat uživatelům v běžném životě při běžných činnostech, tak s tím se můžete seznámit v následujícím příspěvku. Předávám tedy slovo Tomáši Kadlecovi a Honzovi Cejdhamrovi ze společnosti Orkan. Hello, my name is Tomáš Kadlec and I got the chance to show you this aid called Camera System Orkan. How about going for some shopping and show you this in the real world? I think it's a good idea. Let's go for it. So, I'm sure you noticed that uh, thanks to this uh, camera system, I found out what shop I got to, which is a great feature, isn't it? Magdy a Moremio Šumka a sír 140 gramů Nestlé Česko s R.O. Originál taste Coca-Cola 1700 gramů. Kefírové mléko jahodové boni 450 gramů mlékárna Valak. So 
this identification of barcode by by uh, camera or cam is one of the features of this aid and if you have this uh, let's say friend with you you can do your shopping without having the help of any other person so i believe you noticed that thanks to the camera system i knew the price of the product uh, while using just one finger gesture so now i have everything uh, i bought everything that i um, wanted to and now i'm going home to show you other features so recognizing uh, bank notes is another feature of this of this um, aid and let's be honest this feature can be used in any kind of situation hello Tom hello Honza well if you if you own this uh, aid there is a way of identification based on uh, on seeing the person well first you need to upload the photo of the person into the system thanks to thanks to this uh, this uh, aid now I know what the time is and it's time to say goodbye and wish you a nice day thank you thank Tomas very much for uh, the the show up and now i will give you more details so it's a it's a device of the size of a finger the weight is 20 grams this part is out from the user you can see this little touch bar that you can either tap or can move your finger up and down if you tap uh, this gives uh, the the or cam the order to watch uh, what is in front of the device if you move during the reading if you move up and down or to the front or to the back uh, you you say you give the order uh, moving to the front or back if you tap again it means stop reading when or cam is is not uh, reading uh, moving on the on the touch bar it means turning up or down the volume that's the front part uh, when you take a look at this part you can see this uh, silver connector which is for the charging I will show you how it works uh, it works uh, it is magnetic so you just put there the magnetic connector you like break it break it off connect it from the other side and it, it, it always sticks and the charging is on uh, looking from the front side there is this lens and to to a little little uh, diodes uh, that's what you use for uh, taking the photo in lower uh, light then you have two polarized uh, magnets that are used for putting this uh, putting this device on your on your uh, glasses there are two of them and they're polarized as you can see uh, because they they cannot stick the wrong way so you the only way you can stick it it's uh, like looking to the front looking in front of the user very often people ask what languages orcam uh, orcam has of course in the czech version there is the czech language there is german language and there is english another question that we get is uh, can we can we change the speed of the reading of course you can uh, in the settings and you, it's not only the 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 speed of uh, reading but you can you can adjust various types of uh, functions or features of this organ important thing is that the employment office uh, can give you up to 90 percent of its of its price 
but you need uh, you need the documentation from the doctor uh, to as a proof that you belong to group A1 blind or A blind or B practically blind and also you need to you need to show that you know how this works and that it really can help you if you keep this uh, it you can get up to 90% of the price so this was the this was the second part of Agora. Uh, thank to uh, thanks goes to Tomáš and Honza. Again, if you have any questions, uh, send them to Jan at uh, to the email. At the end of this this section i would like to thank to both companies right here or and orkem uh, for for the cooperation in this field of uh, accessibility of uh, the inside um, for users who are visually impaired by the implementation of this uh, right here system that uh, where where we have already started in the in our our university um, Common Scale Square Two in Brno, and as I mentioned, uh, well, when we get the chance, we will be happy to to uh, meet you and to show you this system in the real world. You already got the chance uh, at the Inspo conference, uh, which was, I think, probably if I'm not mistaken, last two years uh, in the Congress Center in Prague, uh, to in in the area where the conference took place and as i mentioned uh, the our our cooperation with these two companies uh, will continue well not now unfortunately but we want to we want to give uh, to put or install this system in other buildings of of masaryk university for both students and teachers if you are interested in this system please uh, let Idan know and uh, he'll be happy to give you all the information information that you would like to get. So again, thank, big thanks to all three presenters. And now let's leave the idea of uh, Israel and their companies and let's focus on what new technologies uh, in the last in the last year or half a year uh, are happening uh, in an Android for visually impaired. The first, the first point will be about something that we started in spring, a uh, blind shell touch phone in some details. This phone was officially officially uh, released a few weeks ago and this, uh, this uh, will be by Kristina Savarjová. Uh, please. Good morning, my, mo my name is Kristina Savarjova and I'm from the Blind Shell Company. First of all, I would like uh, to thank the organizers for uh, allowing me to take part in the online Agora conference, especially in today's difficult times, as well as for the possibility to tell you all about what's new in Blind Shell. Uh, in spring, I mentioned that we're about to release a new touch-enabled phone and today, a couple months later, I can easily say that it's finally here. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about our new phone, which is called Blanchel Touch. But first of all, let's dive into history a little bit. Blanchel Touch is already the fifth model of a blind shell phone. Everything started with two touch enabled phones, blind shell Renaissance and blind shell Baroque in 2015 and 2014, uh, followed by blind shell Classic, blind shell Classic Lite, and today the finally introduced uh, blind shell touch, which is a direct successor of the very popular blind shell Baroque model. Uh, the phone went through a huge redesign, but at the same time, all important features were kept. Currently, you can uh, get one of three models from Blanchel. Blanchel Classic, which is the smartest feature phone, or Blanchel Classic Lite, which is, on the other hand, the easiest, uh, the sim most simple phone for the blind, and finally, the new touch-enabled Blanchel Touch. But let's finally get to the Blanchel Touch itself. It's a modern touch-enabled phone, which is available in two colors, black and red. 
At first sight, at first glance, it looks like a classical touch phone with a huge display, but it's uh, complemented with all important functional features which a smartphone for the visually impaired should have. First, let's answer the basic questions that will occur to you when you say a touch-enabled phone for the blind. So what is it capable of? Blind Shell Touch is a touch-enabled, voice-controlled smartphone, which enables its users to access the internet, communicate over Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, take photos, recognize objects using QR codes, listen to music or audiobooks, and many other online and offline features. Who is it suitable for? This model of a phone is designed for all the blind and visually impaired users who want to use more online features and communication channels than the current blind shell classic model can do. At the same time, it's suitable to users who prefer a touch display over buttons. How do you control blind shell touch? It's controlled using simple, easy to remember single finger gestures as well as uh, with, with voice control. You use only four gestures to control it. And these are short and long press with the one finger and short and long press with two fingers. This system of controls will be no news for previous users of Blind Shell Baroque and uh, it's going to be nothing complicated for new users either. Our new phone is the best choice for more demanding users who prefer touch display over buttons. The phone has over 30 apps which you can use at any time. Let's uh, remain at the most important ones. Blind Shell Touch is fully auditory and if it's online you can control it with your voice. Our clients have very often requested uh, for the accessibility of WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger. Blanche and Touch al allows you to stay in touch with your uh, relatives also using these two communication apps. You can listen to your favorite videos over YouTube. The MP3 player and radio will allow you to listen to music at any time you want. Uh, uh, photo, email, audiobook library and GPS navigation are given as well. Blanchel Touch also has an, an Android web browser where you can visit your favorite websites comfortably directly from within the phone. Using the object recognition with QR codes feature, you will have no more issues with recognizing objects that you commonly use in your household. And for completeness, we can introduce the complete feature sheet of the phone. The basic features include calls, making calls, call history, SMS messages, contacts, alarm clock, calendar, timer, notes, calculator, FM radio, internet radio, and email. The advanced features include the already mentioned WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, YouTube, Android web browser, the recogni object recognition with QR codes feature, music player, book reader, unit converter, uh, weather forecast, GPS location, games, or color recognition. As you could find out yourselves, Blanchel Touch is a phone which is designed in such a way that it enables its users to, uh, that it serves its users in their everyday lives, help them, but also is funny for them. Uh, speaking of technical specifications, Blanchel Touch runs on the Android operating system, which has been especially modified for Blanchel. It has a quad core processor and you can use two SIM cards at the same time with this phone. The operating memory of the phone is one gigabyte and the internal storage is 16 gigabytes. The storage can also be expanded with an SD card so that there's always enough room for storing your photos and uh, data. The phone is uh, has two cameras. The back one has uh, the five megapixels resolution and the front one two megapixels. The display is in almost 16 centimeters in diameter. The design is uh, ahead of its time and it's uh, very pleasant to the touch. It's curved. The phone is available in black and red metallic color and it can uh, dare to face uh, the ordinary smartphones uh, in terms of its appearance. You get the common accessories such as uh, protection, protective glass and a case. Uh, to sum up the previous presentation in uh, several sentences, I dare say that the Blind Child Touch phone is the smartest phone for the blind and visually impaired. An elegant design, 
a touch screen, more than 30 function apps and features, including WhatsApp and Facebook messengers, make Blindshell Touch a clear choice for the more demanding users, and it uh, makes it easier for them to stay in touch with their relatives. All the information, not just about our new product, can be found on our website at www.blindshell.cz. You can also take a look here at all our products, detailed descriptions, pictures, manuals, audio manuals, video recordings, or reviews uh, submitted by our clients. We'll be very happy if you also register or create an account on our website and stay in touch with us. For your questions, uh, to ask your questions, you can use the online chat, which is available to you every day. Once again, thank you for the opportunity to take uh, part in today's Fall Agora run. Thanks for your time and attention, and we are very much looking forward to your questions. Goodbye. And I'd like to thank Christina for her contribution and for her blind shell touch phone introduction. And as has already been mentioned, if you have any questions uh, facing the product at all, please direct them to Christina and her colleagues, and they will also certainly be glad to answer all your questions about the phone. Another contribution will be presented by the person who doesn't need to be introduced very much to regular Agora participants. He's Matej Plch, who has uh, been focusing on localizing and indirectly accessing or making accessible Android, making Android accessible for blind users for a long time. He's been doing this for a long time. And today he's going to introduce to us the solution which you might have known under the name commentary screen reader, screen reader before, but this software changed its name to Tissio Screen Reader International. And uh, under this name, you can find it nowadays, not only to install it, but also, as I mentioned at the beginning, we're also preparing a series of articles focusing on this system. Some of them have already been released at our educational Pelion portal. Others are ready and will be released in the coming days or weeks. So if someone is interested in this topic uh, more deeply, you'll certainly be able to get back to it in more detail over time. And I would like to thank Matej for joining us for preparing the contribution, and I'm giving the floor to him. So good morning to everybody. I would like to shortly present to you the news in the area of uh, the development of the dynamically expanding Android screen reader, which used to be called a commentary screen, screen reader, but it's no longer the case, because since the time uh, when two concurrent branches were being developed, one was uh, especially for China and the other one for the rest of the world, at that time the app other decided to remain, to stick to its original Chinese name. It's spelled J-E-S-H-U-O, but it's uh, pronounced Tishio. So I'd like to dedicate this presentation to beginner users or to people who are still hesitating whether to give it a try or not, the, to give this screen reader a try or not, because since the time I last presented something about this product, a lot of things have changed for the better. And nowadays it can be said that the screen reader is fully prepared for the conditions of our Czech users and uh, it's possible not only because of the complete localization, but also thanks to some details which uh, are related to the rest of the world. In the early versions, when it was still a product aimed just at China, we were facing several issues, the largest one being the one that, while text editing the screen reader didn't distinguish uh, spaces between words, because in China they write words directly one after another together without any separation with spaces, so that was quite an issue for the users in 
Europe and in the rest of the world. And another issue was the fact that a group of various symbols, whether it be the most frequently used ones, question marks, periods, exclamation marks, have not been localized for a very long time. So even this was also a quite a huge issue but nevertheless these things these things are gone long long gone so the app is not only localized for a Czech user but also for the rest of the world and I'm going to divide it in two phases in the first phase I'm shortly going to tell you why you should at least give the product a try and in the other one I'll then shortly mention the most recent features which have been implemented in the la over the last few months. So why should you to show a screen reader? The ones of you who follow the news around Android have already probably noticed that the integrated screen reader talkback has is not unfortunately not being developed very progressively for over two years there's nothing not much new going on around it google has a lot of people a lot of people dedicated to it but not only have we uh, received any revolutionary news recently but also the screen reader is uh, being worse and worse optimized over time and a lot of its features are being remo removed google says they are revoking features that are not useful to them but mostly they are features where the community has a different opinion so uh, essentially it can be said that there's no progress there nothing new important is going on but whereas tissue tissue of screen reader considering the fact that it's only in development been been in development for three years and talk back for 10 years uh, so considering this tissue has already moved ahead and it offers a lot of features and wonderful usability the risk cannot be compared at all even users who use apple devices uh seriously compare it to voiceover uh, in terms of its speed which is actually a huge prize in praise in the android world so the reactions are really very positive uh, using the screen reader is really comfortable you don't have to wait for anything it doesn't happen very often that focus would jump around which does happen with talkback sometimes uh not to mention that even working with text is far more sophisticated and complex. So, if I leave aside the features alone, of which it offers a lot, some of them are free, some of them are paid, but I'm not going to be talking about licenses right now. That's meant for the more advanced users later. But nevertheless, what should... Uh, really capture everyone's interest is the wonderful optimization so even for this reason alone i would give this product a try and give it a chance it's fully localized into czech as well as into slovakian recently our slovak colleagues have fine-tuned it and finished it so even Slo the slovak translation should be uh, ready now speaking of the international version that's unique in that it's uh, got rid of all the Chinese add-ons and services which even the users from the rest of the world had to deal with uh, so even if it had to, if it was not related to them they had to deal with these things and have some elements in the screen reader which were not entirely desirable uh, but this uh, removing of these Chinese features has uh, become noticeable in the app size which is three times smaller now but especially things like chinese voice syntheses have gone away and other things like that which uh, often complicated running or launching the screen reader because they started talking immediately because they were integrated directly and they did not consider the default check voice at all so to put it simply these things are all gone now and the product is really uh, internationally international aware. And now I'm going to mention the news, which have been implemented over the last couple of months. 
the most significant one is that, and that was also a huge handicap over topic for the whole time, which has finally gone away now. So the most significant piece of news is uh, they completely re implemented navigation, both in text as well as on the web, and even system navigation, a third kind of navigation has been added. The system navigation works in uh, such a way that it's possible to quickly control and access certain elements within the operating system, and the web navigation is unique in the fact that compared to TalkBack, which only offers moving by headings, links and landmarks, uh, then Tissio has approached this much more in a much more complex way and we can also encounter moving by lists, checkboxes, tables, forms and so on. So we can uh, show this in practice to give you an idea of everything that it can offer to you. We can hear the screen reader. 952, desktop 2 of 2. So I'm going to start with the web app list. I'm going to open Google Chrome. And it's very simple. It works so that by swiping up and down, uh, the user selects the element by which they want to navigate and then by swiping left or right they move uh, by the individual items of that kind so we can hear on the web everything that's included in the navigation so changing to links buttons landmarks text fields focusable items controls pictures checkboxes list boxes tables lists list items and sliders. So you could hear that th there are a lot more options here than is the case with TalkBack. And uh, speaking of the system navigation, for example, or even the text navigation, you could hear that a little while ago. Uh, that could be heard uh, a little bit by mistake, but we can demonstrate. So text, buttons, text fields, pictures, checkboxes, list items, focusable items, objects, sliders, characters. So we can demonstrate a couple of things. Speaking of text, I have lines, paragraphs, pages, words here. So quite extensive movement possibilities and then the, the access to some of these system elements or functions that I was talking about. Uh, there's an, an interesting feature here translate and copy, where if uh, focus is received, some English text receives a focus, then when you choose the option to recognize and translate, then simply by swiping left to right, you get uh, the immediate translation of the text into Czech. So in this way, it's very easy to translate anything. Also, uh, reading speed is interesting because usually you have to access this setting through some additional menus, but here it's accessible directly, so it's only enough to swipe to, it's just enough to swipe to reading speed, and again, by swapping left we decrease it, and by swiping up uh, we can increase it. So 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 80, 75, 70, 65, 60, 55, 50. So it works uh, like this. Another new feature which has been implemented is support for multi-finger gestures in Android 11. Unfortunately, I cannot demonstrate this in practice because I don't have this version of the system for now. But in, essentially to those who know, for example, iPhone, uh, they know these controls very well. These are the various multi-taps, whether it's a double tap with three fingers or, I don't know, a triple tap with two fingers and so on. You can, in this way, you can uh, in, uh, activate various features of the apps or of the system itself and it's implemented directly on the level of Android 11 itself. So even Google's own screen reader uh, which means TalkBack should support this. And the last essential piece of news that I'm going to mention is complete support for external Bluetooth keyboards, which the users have also requested for a long time. 
and it's not just uh, the rudimentary support for some basic uh, navigation along the system, but it also includes support for uh, navigating on the web as well, which means that using the physical keys on the keyboard, you can jump across links, headings, and so on. And also, uh, another interesting thing has been implemented, which is that there is some Mm, there's a lot of keystrokes, but the user can define their own. Uh, then it's also possible to back up the scheme which you created in this way and save it for further usage or in case of, a cr on a, of an app crash, then a lot of things uh, thanks to be restored, thanks to this backup and the user doesn't have to reconfigure everything manually from the beginning. Okay, so... I think uh, this has been more than enough for this short presentation and uh, the workshop, which is also going to be aimed at beginner users, uh, then I'm shortly mentioned that the workshop is going to be about how to properly adjust and configure the Tissue screen reader in such a way that all the features work according to your expectations. So I'd like to thank you for your attentions and goodbye for now. I thank to Matej and I'm happy that he's also presented already the program of one of the workshops that we're preparing for you for the coming weeks. So as we already said, those of you who are interested in learning more about the topic will certainly have the opportunity. A blog about the accessibility of Android for the visually impaired will be concluded by the third contribution, which will be presented by Honza Husak, and it's going to be talking about one of the simplest, if not the simplest at all, interface which uh, adjusts Android controls in such a way that is accessible to as a wide a target group of users as possible. I've known Hansa for a couple of years already. I'm glad he accepted our invitation. He prepared his presentation and about what Big Launcher is and, for example, why it was created in the first place and why it exists, he'll tell you yourselves. You have the floor, Hunza. So, hello, everybody. I would like to say hello to all participants here. And uh, I'm one of the one of the two uh, people who founded uh, the Big Launcher. And uh, I met Radek in 2030 when Big Launcher started. I think this is the good uh, good situation to, to look at the slides that were topical in 2003. Uh, Big Launcher was launched uh, probably eight years ago. Well, my, my mother, uh, her, her phone broke, uh, she had some sort of flip phones, and in those times I was, I was thinking about what new uh, phone to buy her, and, and Android phones were beginning, but uh, they were not very accessible, you know, the display was too small, the gestures were not so easy, and I met uh, Daniel Kunesh, a very talented um, computer programmer, and uh, I told him, let's make an app to make this easier. Uh, nothing too too difficult, just six uh, six icons and it will be done it will be done in uh, over over the weekend. Well this was years ago and we're still working on this. The world was changed. There is not just one billion of phones uh, on the planet. It's more than three and a half billion uh, till today and 75% uh, or maybe more than that uh, are in Android. So we realized that uh, also older people, uh, older people buy these phones as well. Not only old people, but uh, people over the age of 40 who, let's say that their arms are getting shorter, they cannot really see at the display. And we were thinking how to make this smartphone easier to use and how to give this uh, 
chance to use a smartphone to people who otherwise wouldn't be able to to use a smartphone. So the idea is to put the very basic uh, functions on the main screen. Uh, there is there is uh, messages, uh, there is contacts, and there is this uh, there is SOS uh, situation to call a to a predefined number. Of course, during the years, uh, there it was uh, evolved, evolved, evolved greatly, but the basis uh, remains. We were listening to to the customers, and uh, we were uh, we put some extra features. Of course, for example, you have uh, multiple uh, the option to use multiple screens to use. Um, to use shortcuts, but really the basis is still the same and the idea is to have the phone as easy to use as possible. We started with uh, Czech and English only, but uh, well, of course most uh, grandmothers cannot speak English. At the moment we are using or we are uh, giving the chance to use 50, 52 languages. This is my favorite slide, competition. This slide is from seven years ago, and I don't think that uh, any of this competition uh, remains until today. There is, of course, a new competition, and uh, I believe and I am quite sure that we are the only company that was here since the beginning uh, because we because we keep listening to users, uh, people people like us people use us although there might be some 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 uh, ways that are free of charge but still people again go back to us because uh, our system is good our system is stable it doesn't crash and it's uh, it's very easy to use. Uh, at the beginning, Google supported um, not so great contrast on their displays, you know, gray and, and white. Well, what we were trying to do, we tried to focus on the the easy um, legibility or readability. Well, in last years, this was changed a little bit uh, because even even Google started with giving contrast to their to their um, standard phones. Uh, another thing is, uh, we offer users really huge letters, really huge figures, uh, so that it was it was um, possible to use by visually impaired. Uh, we also did this change that uh, we can read to the user more pieces of information than what actually is on the screen because of the huge letters. So, for example, you don't need to click or open the message and uh, it will be read to you. So, we move further than uh, Google does. Uh, because uh, because uh, this, because you can use the phone using just with your one finger, uh, we implemented the, the feature of talkback. Uh, so it's something between a uh, phone for for practically blind and for those who are uh, visually impaired and but still can use their eyes to check and to, to control the phone. We're also working with uh, with a company who, who creates uh, special interfaces for people who cannot really, uh, who can really move. Uh, and I need to say that these features, we, we didn't create all the teachers, uh, all the features. We were, uh, it was important to listen to the community, listen to the users, and we used the, some of the features based on the feedback that we that we got from the, from the users. What we do is we read emails, we read reviews, we listen to our users, and we're trying to prepare the safe environment for them. Uh, it can be for the users themselves or, for example, 
what I am, trying to be a good son and helping to my mother. So if you have any questions, uh, just, you know, contact us on Facebook or write an email to us. Um, if you if you never tried this, you know, try it out. There is, there is a demo version uh, online. And um, I wish you... A, very nice rest of the day and uh, yeah, see you. You cannot see the display of your phone. Would you like to use the phone with a great, with a large display that is too complicated, too difficult for you? Download Big Launcher and use the phone without any difficulties. It's easy and, and it's large because uh, the basic features of phones are, are enhanced so the history of calling uh, text messages and, and editing and editing everything is easy to be read you don't get you don't get lost in complicated uh, you know settings and other features it's very easy there's also the sos button so if you are in trouble uh, it can it can be used to contact uh, your your relatives for example and even save your life you don't you won't need your glasses just because you can't see the standard font, the standard letters. You can choose various uh, colored schemes that can, uh, that can save your, your strength in your, in your eyes. You can, you, can, you can edit it, you can add your own buttons, add your own icons, even the, even the, even the widgets. And if you run out of, out of space or of place on your screen just uh, you can put there another uh, because of great accessibility it's also an option for people who are really difficult to move so stop stop having difficulties with your phone and enjoy your phone and, and be in touch with your relatives download big launcher download the demo uh, and th th this offer will not be around um for unlimited time so try it out so I would like to thank Honza for the introduction of Big Launcher and this um, contribution finishes another part of our conference in this in this in this um, part we uh, learn some news on, uh, in, in Android system and Google phones at the moment you can use the blind shell or you can use uh, use uh, big launcher as well uh, well you know from from the the solutions that are mentioned here uh, and Jitsuo is one of them as well. So if you need to make Android phone more accessible, there are ways to do that. There are ways for to do that for, for everybody. Everybody can find the way that's uh, perfect for them. Next contribution will move into a slightly different area. And I would like to welcome Julia Tomanova from uh, Brno Vida Center, and she will tell us uh, about how exactly Vida Science Center make, makes um, accessible uh, to visually impaired students. We will not speak only about the environment and making it accessible, uh, but we will also talk about what what exactly is connected with other uh, various projects that we mentioned, so the education for the blind and visually impaired. So, Yulcha, thank you very much, and I would like you to continue with the conference. Two years ago, me and my uh, colleagues from the Brno Science Center joined a challenge with, to unify the formal and informal education for students with specific needs. We are preparing uh, popular and educational programs and gradually modifying the elements of our exhibition for the partially sighted and blind visitors. And we have to admit that there's still a long journey ahead of us in further development. 
development. That's why we're glad that we can move it forward with our collaborating uh, school teacher colleagues and our Teoresia Center colleagues. The, our visual perception in our programs, we gradually replace them by using touch and hearing, including such classical visual disciplines as chemistry, biology or physics. Uh, we use different things to help us with that, 3D printers, handmade uh, models of self-created aids, but especially looking for the primary motivation why it's uh, great to learn something regardless of whether I have or don't have a disability. Over the last two years, uh, we implemented in the um, 22 various programs overall for uh, classes of pupils with different combinations of disabilities between 13 and 19 years of age. Now, uh, me and my lecturer colleagues are shortly going to introduce to you our our project programs, including the photos. We changed the photos of our young participants, the faces of your young participants in the photos. Please apologize, this is not entirely appropriate modification, but it was done for because of the privacy and youth of our visitors. We believe it's uh, going to be uh, sufficient to illustrate what we're doing here. The goal of the heart and lungs inside of us is to understand how our work, how our heart works and how it's connected to the lungs and how it all works together. Every student at the beginning worked with their own phonendoscope, then in pair the students measured their blood pressure using the pressure meter and they wrote the values down to school later. The core of the program is a dissection, dissection of the heart itself. Every pair of students uh, gets a real poor car and under, under the lecturer's guidance they first explored from the outside and then also from the inside. Surprisingly, the students did very well and the topic interested them a lot. Uh, and the conclusion of the entire program is making pork lungs breathe using an ambu bag. Uh, the first aid program was longer than other blocks and it took an entire morning. It's based off the methodology of the countrywide local organization which uh, learns first aid, teaches first aid through experience. And we also consulted this rescue program with the methodologist of our South Moravian region. So it's also suitable for partially sighted and blind students. Of course, at the beginning of the program, it was necessary to introduce a little bit of theory, but emphasis was placed on the students to try everything out in practice. So the class was often separated into small groups. We taught the students how to find out if a person breathe, is breathing normally. They were taught to resuscitate, to stop even massive bleeding and try what to do when someone faints or pours hot water on them or breaks their ankle. And after the initial hesitation and laughing, the students re really dove into the training seriously and treated the simulation seriously. Uh, because of uh, various stereotypes, there's only a tiny percentage of students who are ex excited about chemistry. And uh, we decided using the block chemistry, uh, uh, everyday chemistry, to remove these stereotypes, stereotypes and somehow it's not just about calculating various formulae and laws and equations, but to introduce chemistry as a useful everyday helper in your everyday life. Uh, it was a two hour long block and we experimented with various things that we can find at home in the kitchen, aid kit. Uh, and using these things, we explained the principle of uh, how hard coal works or how to cook an egg without a flame. And the greatest challenge was to concentrate on haptic and uh, auditory exhibitions so the so that even disabled students can discover the magic of science and we're pleased to say that uh, in this way we, they enhance not only their awareness of chemistry but also their soft skills such as cooperation communication or problem solving which we uh, also focused on in this block the topic of human sexuality still remains, even today, a taboo for many young adults or adults, but the nudity and human body is a normal part of our lives, uh, just like uh, our diversity in society. So 
Before introducing this topic, we asked uh, the question about whether we learn enough and openly and without prejudices about the changes in our body. Uh, no matter how limited the options of visually impaired students of learning about this are limited, we tried to create uh, a friendly conditions and as comfortable and secure environment as possible to, for them to learn about the human body and to ask their questions about our diversity, which required partial separation of the students into boys and girls part and a special practical help with uh, the reproduction system using silicone models of organs, which was a little difficult time-wise and logistics-wise, but our efforts certainly returned or came back to us in the form of their gratitude, of the students' gratitude, who immensely appreciated our openness and honesty and sharing the experiences uh, and, and the options that this program introduced to them. A classical chapter from a physics textbook can also be treated differently than calculating electric resistance and drawing schemes. We use the fact that electricity can not only be seen well, but also heard and felt or smelled well. And we built a 150 minutes long program during which the students themselves felt the power of static electricity. They found out what's inside a battery. They tried to uh, hand make a source of energy to make a siren resonate. We also dove into more complex uh, issues of blackout, which is a situation where we would lose all power altogether. And uh, even though it was a program quite demanding for both the participants as well as us organizers, because we were altering between a very wide scale of uh, aids and topics, we were pleased to find out that we managed to have a little change of attitude in our peoples towards physics as a discipline which uh, borders on our everyday life. And for real, every one of us can find whatever is interesting to them or what they need or what they simply find fun. Uh, we also promised in our project a program focusing on geography. After consulting and beta testing various possibilities, we decided to narrow the contents down to the place where our pupils uh, study and live directly. In an all-morning block, we looked at topic of uh, city architecture and students tried to design such a city where they would like to live in uh, to live themselves the goal was to lead the pupils to the interest about the environment they live in what their priorities are and what they would like for their city or to do for their city in their own model of such a place they then worked with various materials and aids and we used 3d models of uh, known uh, buildings and places for inspiration as well as haptic maps which complement classic maps with a unique information about the surface and a practical layout of the area. Uh, what's ahead of us? Uh, considering the limitation which currently prevents us from meeting our students face to face, we have uh, postponed further project uh, implementations until the classical visitor operation of uh, the connected schools and our science center is restored. After the project is over, the result will be the methodology, which can be used by teachers and students, as well as enriching our everyday operation, and I hope not just the project operation for programs with will bring enriching science experiences to everybody. I hope we're going to meet you all in these programs. On behalf of the lecturer team of Science Without Borders, I wish you a nice day and thank you for your attention. And uh, Radek speaking, I thank you. Uh, I thank you and everyone from the Science Center and I cross my fingers for what they're doing because I find it an amazing task uh, which is good for practice but not difficult, not simple at all. If you know Science Center and take a look at the exhibitions and programs they offer, I think there's still a lot to do and uh, it's also we really have to bow down to the effort
uh, which uh, Julia and her colleagues put in it. So I believe when the opportunity allows uh, that we'll come to see some program or exhibition in the Science Center together. The last two contributions are concerned with the topic of using Braille displays in education, but not only in education of the blind. And as I already mentioned, it's uh, going to be a contribution or entry of our project, School as a Center for Collegial Support, where we have uh, intensively worked on this topic for the last few months, and we have prepared some materials for it which we'll gradually introduce to you. And the introduction of the following presentation is very simple for me because I was asked not to mention anything, not to reveal anything. So I'm only going to say that the news about uh, a specific interesting aid, assistive aid, are going to be introduced by Michal Jungmann from the Gal company. And because I'm not to say more, then I will not say more. And I'm using this opportunity to thank Michal for his contribution and give the floor to him. So, hello everybody, I'm saying hello from Prague to Brno and from Brno to the whole world. So now please listen. Uh, now listen to this sound. You couldn't really see anything, but uh, if you heard it, I heard this correctly, not sure if it, if it went through, it was the correct characteristic uh, sound that uh, that is created by the Orbit Reader 20, uh, a braille uh, display reader. Uh, so just briefly for for those who were not in Brno, uh, basically every every important piece of information is in the name because twenty twenty is the is the number of letters uh, that can be displayed um, because the standard thing is between twelve or fourteen, so twenty is really really good. Uh, it's called a reader uh, reader of uh, digital texts in Braille letters uh, so it's it's uh, very similar to, to for example uh, Kindle or other ebook reader uh, for those who use uh, visual for their reading this is for the visually impaired or blind uh, Orbit is for Orbit Research, the name of American company that creates this, uh, this device. Uh, there is the classic style uh, Braille keyboard that you can you can also uh, use to to create your own notes. So it can also be a notepad. So now we explain the the, the name of this of this device, and now let's go for the for the topic and the topic is the the news and user experiences or experience uh, so uh, last last autumn it was mentioned that uh, the reader would be would be uh, available from from uh, January, which is true. So if you decide and if you order this, uh, you can have you can have this device with you in in a few in a few days or maybe maybe weeks. Another piece of news is important for for uh, users who don't only use Czech or 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 um, English, but also different languages. Because the trouble is that Orbit Reader doesn't really uh, or cannot really change uh, the, the Braille readers. And uh, as you have in JAWS or NVDA, uh, but you can have just one Braille table. But uh, we are now working on putting uh, more uh, a greater table that will also have the Czech, not only the Czech, but also Polish, French, Spanish, and Italian, and other, and other languages. And also Esperanto as a bonus. 
Uh, another another news is about the, some sort of case that can be used to to um, carry this around this device around. One has usually one of them is good, the other not so good. The good thing is that there is now well beginning beginning in um, November there is original case. The not so good uh, not so good. Um, thing is that the cost of this is uh, around 2,000 crowns. Well, but that's life, I guess. Now, now we're moving you uh, to the news in, uh, announced by the, by the producer. So there are two versions, Orbit Reader 20 and Orbit Reader 20 Plus. There are some features that are extra, uh, of course, for example, uh, the, the can show the time, the calendar and calculator, and of course the same, the same features as the basic version. Uh, another well, the, the bad thing is, a good thing is that it can be bought also in the Czech Republic, but unfortunately the extra price you have to pay is much higher than it was It, it was originally announced, uh, more than 10,000 crowns. Uh, the basic version is sold at uh, 23,900 uh, 23, crowns and the Orbit Reader is 33. 1,900, which is not so great. Uh, now, uh, some time ago, uh, the producer inserted that it, there will be Orbit 40, with 40 letters, and also Orbit Writer, that should work as keyboard, uh, that could be connected with, the, with, for example, a mobile phone or tablet. And again, two pieces of news. Uh, good news is that this these devices will be will be in sale uh, starting in probably two two months. And the bad thing is, I mean, originally it was announced uh, really a long time ago, so uh, we're not sure about about uh, being this available in Europe and about the price. So these are the this is the news. Now let's let's uh, talk about the the experience, the user experience. So you can see in here five pieces of experience. Number one, I use the reader uh, for reading uh, for reading uh, for example fairy tales to my son. It was great because mobile and comfortable. The second, uh, after many years, I started reading poetry again. Number three, I go to a choir and uh, I'm using this instead of a, instead of a songbook, which is much more comfortable and practical. Number four, I was surprised that uh, these 20 letters don't uh, do not limit at all and they say, uh, I mean, it's quite loud but not so disturbing. The last one was that we heard that it is quite loud but I don't have this experience, it's perfectly fine. Uh, very interesting, uh, very interesting piece of information. You can use the support, the support of the employment office. Uh, you can ask for the state compensation, and uh, not many, not many users use this. And uh, it, it seems that uh, despite of this. The, it was it was bought by many people around the world. Uh, so I'm running out of time. So if you are interested in Orbit Reader, I can I can recommend you to put into Google three words: Orbit Reader Gallop, and on the website uh, there will be a link to this to the article uh, with the review of this device. Thank you very much for your patience and. Uh, Radek for for his patients especially and I want him to continue with the 
conference. So, thank you very much, uh, Radek, for uh, giving us the news and the whole Agora conference and, uh, of course, this this part of Agora, which is divided, uh, which is given to Braille uh, readers, will be finished by uh, Roman Kabelka, uh, my colleague, that will present and they will present his, uh, his topic using the braille display for for education of the blind and part of this presentation is also the comparison of all of the models of braille readers that are on the market so if you are now thinking about for example which braille display to buy and you want uh, uh, some pieces of information about about that or if you if you work in a school and you're thinking about which type to buy or to recommend for your employ uh, sorry for your uh, students or pupils so this uh, this brochure that it will be created by uh, Roman will be the best place uh, where to go. As I mentioned, we will, uh, beginning from today in the afternoon, uh, we will continue with the presentation of this material uh, online. And if you are interested, uh, the materials will be continuously uh, ready for your use. So I would like to thank to Roman and his colleagues uh, for the amount of work. And now, please, Roman, I would like you to start start talking. Good morning. I'd like to introduce to you a guide which is concerned with the of braille display not only in education. This guide has been created in the Theresia Center. I collaborated on it with, uh, I'm Roman Kabelka, and I collaborated on it with Michal Jelinek, Yuri Fens, and uh, it was all coordinated and guided by Radek Pavlíček. This guide is uh, meant as a comparison of braille displays which are currently offered at the Czech market. But of course, you can also find here information uh, that's important for able to understand what such a braille display is uh, useful for and especially how it can be utilized in education. When we look at the two main uh, possibilities that will be one, then a braille display can be used especially when reading. Uh, when uh, for professional reading, and then also to simplify the communication with mobile devices. That's uh, quite a current topic. Uh, by the professional reading, we mean uh, especially two areas. It's reading of documents, which can also be books. We have to mention that there are users for who uh, synthetic voice is not entirely pleasant and they prefer reading in Braille because they know it, they can read it quickly and it's uh, pleasant for them. An important factor is also that uh, if the user reads the documents in Braille, then uh, he or she enhances uh, their literacy. Uh, they have the structure of the document under their fingers, and that's quite uh, important. Then there is also an uh, and significant uh, role is uh, can be useful when you want to read when you want to read uh, aloud. Now, when I'm currently presenting to you, I have my notes on a braille display. If I used voice synthesis, I might not be able to keep up so well. 
uh, when it comes to working with structured content, because that's also related to professional reading, uh, there is uh, there it's important to perceive in detail how the content is written. That's, uh, for example, useful when studying foreign languages or in uh, programming by the fact that individual characters are displayed on the display and you can also quite well touch or sense the pacing between words the, then the scaling of the content uh, more distinguishable and also using uh, voice synthesis for these uh, activities is not as intuitive because there you have to decide among various keystrokes which you are going to use to read the content. For some notations, of course, uh, norms are important for some notations. For example, uh, mathematics, uh, that means the way you know it, printed in on braille paper, uh, the user would like to have it in the same way on the braille display, in uh, the digital form, which uh, can be approached or contributed to in this way. If the display is connected to the computer and uh, it has several advantages, for example, you can click into or dr drill down into the expressions and orient yourself in the content in a better way. Now it almost looks like uh, a braille display is something that everyone should have, but it's not the case. Uh, of course, uh, there are users for who uh, voice synthesis is better suitable for this, their way using digital technologies. Uh, it's entirely sufficient for them. And uh, not to mention that there are also certainly some cases for where the voice synthesis is uh, more fluid and faster for the basic usage. But speaking of education, for example, or of uh, career and professional work, uh, these are areas where a braille display can help a lot by perceiving the content the level of the individual character, so we can very well specify the level of detail and perceive the syntax, perceive uh, grammar and spelling, and also the structure or the outline of the text. The users, and I've come across during my uh, career of a lecturer, I've come across clients who were being educated practically exclusively via voice synthesis. And uh, it was really noticeable from their writing. They wrote as the way uh, they hear. Sometimes they even wrote phonetically. And uh, above all, their expression, their point was not entirely well structured. So it wasn't possible to orient in it. Uh, very well. It sounded a little bit when you were reading it afterwards, almost like uh, transcripts of, uh, you know, recordings of legal litigations. So a braille display is assistive technology specified by the law, and it's also specific. So you can apply for it to be, uh, you can apply for governmental funding in all to re We explain two items there in the guide under which you can apply for this foundation, uh, funding, funding to get the Braille display. Speaking of all the guide's organization, uh, uh, speaking of how the braille display is organized, technical-wise, it's a terminal device because nowadays it not only provides output in braille, but also braille input. It's connected, usually connected via 
either USB, a USB port, or a, it's more comfortable to connect it wirelessly Bluetooth. Mm. It's always necessary to have a screen reader present in the device to which you're connecting the display. And speaking of other usual parameters, the displays have uh, varying sizes. Usually, uh, what can what sizes can be found are from 12 to 80 characters. It's always a single line of text, and depending on how long the line is, the Braille displays are categorized, which we'll reach in a while. We'll get to in a while. The Braille keyboard on a Braille display is beneficial not only for writing in Braille, but also for controlling the screen reader or the connected de device itself. Uh, it can be used uh, without having to connect, for example, to a computer. So the Braille display can be used without connecting to a computer. For example, we can write, uh, take notes at least. Of course, some models can do more. For example, they have uh, calendar features or other features. As I said, uh, Braille displays are charged via the USB port uh, using the proper cable. Uh, and for the wireless usage, they, the Braille displays provide uh, a built-in battery, which uh, usually lasts up to 15 to 20 hours of operation. On a Braille display, there are different tactile controls. Uh, essentially, they get into two groups. The first group are controls that enable us to, to control what's displayed on it or to specify where the text cursor should be placed. These controls are the so-called routing buttons. buttons. And then there are the second group, the controls, including the Braille keyboard, with which it's possible to control the connected device directly. Speaking of uh, the categorization of Braille displays, they are uh, there are 24 cell displays and uh, 24 cells and larger. These are the classical displays which uh, will serve the user well uh, to orient in the text because the display they have is uh, efficiently large. And of course, they're also suitable for reading and uh, to be used uh, with a computer or to read from a computer. Then there are the braille, dis the braille terminals, which also have more than 24 cells, uh, and they also provide the keyboard in addition to just the display. And compared to the classical displays, they're also different in at least some rudimentary autonomous features. They combine quite well the uh, having a quite long line so they can be used even for some professional work where we need to have an overview of the content but uh, also they're also portable they can be used with uh, mobile devices although of course the these terminal displays themselves are larger devices but to be used with a computer as well as with a mobile device they're a good compromise of course if we know that we want to use the braille display especially with the mobile devices then it's uh it comes in handy to use the pocket terminals 
which mají ten řádek kratší, ale samozřejmě ty zařízení jsou menší, takže na to noši have a shorter line in a way and of course the devices themselves are smaller so they're better suited to for care around on the go not to mention that even the uh, variability of how they can be used is certainly greater for example they can be put in a case uh, with an, with an attached strap they can be carried over your shoulder and they're quite uh, Mm, agile. Of course, our guide includes much more information, even from the areas that I introduced here. Uh, so even the introduced information is uh, described in much more, in much greater detail. And we also discuss other topics such as usage in education, in different activities. We discuss uh, the comparison of the various technologies of the braille displays, what options of controlling the displays there are, and so on. So for this level of details, I'm going to uh, recommend you to consult the guide which is published on the Pillion portal and there you can read how the comparison worked out. There's also a brief summary where we have defined some basic user groups and uh, for which the given model is suitable. So I would like to thank you for your attention. And I wish you a nice day. Uh, thanks a lot to Roman and to the colleagues who collaborated on preparing this material. And uh, there's nothing else left for me other than to thank uh, not only to the last presenter, but to all of them, because the plenary session of the Fall Agora 2020 is uh, successfully has been successfully concluded. I believe you liked it. I believe everybody found your topic of interest in it and that you're going to stay with us not only in the following years, but especially in the coming weeks of uh, this year already, because as we already mentioned, we are not finishing the Agora with this plenary session, but beginning it with it. Uh, I sent links to invitations for various workshops and lectures and other materials that we're gradually going to prepare and publish and uh, offer to you. So certainly follow the web of the conference itself, agora.munic.cz, which is going to serve as a hub from where you can head in the right direction to the workshop or for a tutorial that you want. Also, follow poslepu.cz, where all this information is going to be published and offered gradually. Follow our social networks, the Facebook of the Theresia Center, the Facebook page of the Pillion Portal, this Agora event on Facebook, so that you will not miss out on any of the news here and of the information you need to get there and to enhance your digital literacy in this way, which is our common goal, as Gabina Drastichová already said in her introductory speech. I'd like to thank once more to all the participants, uh, whether those who connected us, uh, who joined us online today, as well as to those who can, who will watch the plenary session subsequently from the recording. I thank the presenters for uh, um, spending their time preparing their contributions on interesting topics and presenting the topic, their topics, which I believe found their listeners among the participants. Uh, thanks once again to my te colleagues, the, technician, the technicians for preparing the technical infrastructure without which it would not be possible to organize Agora in this way. I thank to the interpreters who interpreted this entire program into English. Thanks to that, we could offer it to 
The entire Czech and Slovak Republic, of course, thanks to Petr Peňas for uh, crossing his fingers for this event and giving it the time it deserves. And we can organize the event under the Theresia Center. And of course, thanks to all our partners and everyone who had a part in uh, Agora, whether it be our main general partners, the Deloitte Company and the Czech Radio Endowment Fund, which supports Agora from the, from the Firefly grant, and whether it be other partners whose activities we will propagate in the coming days, whether it be the Vodafone Foundation, which currently uh, which is currently looking for new projects into their laboratory. So if you have an idea or in a desk somewhere in a notebook, uh, some project that you'd like to consult and that is uh, meaningful according to you and it's uh, competitive and you'd like to help with it in some way, uh, then feel free to uh, reach out to the colleagues from our Vodafone Foundation. There is a, an offering of workshops that we organize together with the Open House Project, Open House Prague, that's an architectural 3D modeling for the visually impaired, where the goal is to create a sufficient number of 3D models of buildings, which will be useful to the users, which means that will be that will respect the specifications of uh, perceiving such models via touch. There are activities of the Firefly, which Kabina has already mentioned, whether it be the support of individuals, students, or the possibility for organizations to apply for uh, a grant in the Kaufland Fund. So if someone of you has a topic or a project or an idea that the Firefly could uh, support in this way, feel free to reach out to them and take a look at their website and there you'll learn everything you need. Uh, in conclusion, I would like to invite you to join one more event, which can also support uh, or enable Firefly to keep providing its support in the same the same level as it does currently. I prepared uh, this beautiful head-mounted flashlight. For those of you who are my Facebook friends, you could have seen it already. As you probably know, one of the Fireflies projects are the so-called night runs. Uh, this year, unfortunately, they could not take place because of the COVID precautions in uh, the extend they were planned. So Firefly reacted to the situation in a very flexible way and they offer the possibility to join the so-called virtual Firefly run or just virtual walking if you don't want to run or don't want or cannot for some reason. And thus they offer the option to support Firefly in this way. I already took part in this with my family. We uh, walked for a beautiful eight kilometer long walk uh, with my family on Sunday. So if uh, you're looking for a meaningful nudge to move on, then take a look at behprosvetlusku.cz and you'll find everything you need there and you can um, give a meaning to your movement in this way. Okay, so that's everything from me finally. I believe I haven't forgotten anyone or anything. Once again, huge big thanks to everybody who has uh, joined today's uh, Agora plenary session in any way and uh, however you contributed to its successful running and uh, thank you on behalf of the entire organizational team. I wish uh, for you to stay safe and healthy and I believe we are soon going to meet either virtually or in person.